Dear listeners, welcome to another insightful episode of MedSynapse podcast. Today, we are honored to have Dr. Rahul Shabadi, a distinguished consultant in cardiac anesthesia at Nottingham University Hospital, UK. Our topic of discussion is the evolution of echocardiography to its present state. Dr. Shabari brings a wealth of experience with additional qualifications, including fellowships in cardiac anesthesia at MC Master University and liver transplant anesthesia at the University of Miami. He holds diplomat status from the National Board of Echocardiography and is a fellow of American Society of Echocardiography. Join us as we explore the fascinating journey of echocardiography under Dr. Shabadi's expert guidance. Welcome, Dr. Rahul Shabadi. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nigar and MedSynapse for giving me this opportunity. I really appreciate your efforts to bring the physicians and uh, people who are interested in medicine to listen to this uh, podcast. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of MedSynapse family. You are more than welcome. Thank you so much, doctor. Now let's begin with our podcast. But before we begin, I would love to hear about your personal journey in discovering and nurturing your passion for this field. How did you find your passion for echocardiography? So, uh, Nigar, the journey started uh, from Anastasia itself. When I started my uh, postgraduate training in anesthesiology at... Uh, came hospital Mumbai, I always wanted to pursue more in, in the field of uh, anesthesia. And always the cardiology and heart was my passion since my medical schooling. So once I finished my postgrad, I joined a fellowship at uh, a very prestigious Narayan Rudalaya, Bangalore, which is a huge center in India. They operate like 7,000 cardiac cases per annum. And there for the first time, I got to get hooked up to this very interesting technology, something called transesophageal echocardiography. I saw the physicians there using this uh, fascinating technology and I was really impressed and I thought I found my passion. And then I wanted to learn more in this field of echocardiography. So I went to the McMaster University, Canada, where I got a very good experience in the field of adult transesophageal echocardiography. Then uh, for the last 10 years, when I was working in Oman, uh, I used this technology to the echocardiography and then started using 3D echocardiography. So I think uh, this is my journey. And now I'm using my 2D and 3D echocardiography for my perioperative uh, period. And it gives a lot of information about the patients. That's my journey, Nigar. Thank you so much, Dr. Shabari, for sharing your personal journey and your discovery for your passion for echocardiography. It's enlightening to hear about the path that led you to this field. And thank you so much for your openness in sharing your experience with us. Now, let's begin with our podcast. Dr. Shabari, how has echocardiography evolved from its early days to the present state in terms of technology and diagnostic capabilities? So I think the today's podcast need clear cut and very special attention to few names like Curie, Adler, Herbs, and uh, Bernoulli. Without mentioning those names, I think our podcast will not be complete. So uh, quickly, I will um, tell you how the echocardiography came into clinical practice. So it all started with Curie uh, when the piezoelectric crystals were invented. Those are the special crystals which can emit ultrasound and receive them back. So with the uh, invention of uh, piezoelectric crystals, uh, those were used during the First and Second World War to detect the uh, warships. So then the Edler and Hertz, the Edler was a cardiologist and Hertz was a physicist. So they found this can be used for imaging the heart. And they did the imaging the heart for the first time and they mentioned it as a ultrasound cardiography. So the first time the imaging of the heart was done and was 
mentioned as ultrasound cardiography that is UCG. Then, as I said, this is something called as a sonar technology, which we have heard many times. That is sound navigation and ranging, which was used during the First and Second World War to detect the warships. Then, this was taken further by the Bernoulli, who was very passionate, and he discovered something called Doppler. And this is how the echocardiography evolved. And the first time before the echocardiography took place, they had been trying to image the brain using ultrasound and they had been mentioning it as echoencephalography. And when the imaging of the heart was done with ultrasound, later on the UCG got changed to echocardiography and it was abbreviated to ECG first. Then it was confused with the electrocardiogram and the echocardiography. Both were abbreviated as ECG. And then the scientists, they decided to rename uh, echocardiography abbreviate to echo. So this is the journey that echocardiography, which started with UCG to echo, this is the journey which took place. Thank you so much for sharing with us the fascinating journey to see how echocardiography has advanced from its humble beginnings to the sophisticated technology that it is today. Now, moving to our next question, we would greatly appreciate hearing more about the milestones in the development of echocardiography. Could you please uh, begin with that? It would be very insightful to our listeners. Yeah, certainly, Nigar. So when the echocardiography started, it started with something called A scan, that is amplitude, and the M mode came into existence. So the M mode was discovered, and it used to give the only uh, M is motion, so abbreviation is M mode. So it used to give idea about the motion of the heart, and that's how the uh, physician started understanding the mitral stenosis or mitral regurgitation. And then later on, the B scan, the brightness scan came into the picture. So from there, the 2D echocardiography came into picture. So the 2D echocardiography is picturizing the three-dimensional th three heart into two-dimensional structure. And it started giving you the image of the heart. And then, as I mentioned, the Bernoulli discovered the Doppler effect. And then the Doppler mode came into the picture. And then color mode. And later on, the 3D mode, which is the three-dimensional echocardiography, came into the clinical practice. Then the strain pattern came into clinical practice. And now we are using something called ICE, that is intracardiac echocardiography. So over a period of many years, we started from M mode and we have reached to a stage where we are doing the three-dimensional echocardiography, where we can exactly see the three-dimensional structure of the heart uh, and we can do the uh, you know cutting sections without even touching the heart and then we can do something intracardiac echocardiography where we put a catheter which is having uh, ultrasound emitting facility on its tip and we can see the different chambers of the heart from inside the heart so this is the journey that we have came across now, moving on to our next question, what role has technological innovations played in enhancing the accuracy and efficiency of echocardiographic assessments? So the, te the technology has played an uh, immense role. I think uh, it is very important to mention today in our podcast. So the echocardiography that we see, so sophisticated, so advanced, it is the fruit of the continuous hard work of many physicists, scientists, researchers, engineers. So the technology which was used for the marine warship have come to, uh, have come to the medical field and it has been used now widespread for the uh, patient's treatment. So the engineers, researchers have contributed tons to achieve these milestones, not only in the field of echocardiography, but I think in every field of medicine, they are the real heroes behind the scene and they definitely reserve a loud crap from us. Now, when it comes to artificial intelligence, 
In what ways has the integration of artificial intelligence influenced the interpretation and diagnosis in echocardiography? Yeah, I know the artificial intelligence is the hot cake as of now. So everybody wants to know how the artificial intelligence is going to change our lives. Uh, I can definitely tell the artificial intelligence is going to be the game changer in the field of medicine and definitely in the uh, field of echocardiography. I still remember even when I started my journey in the field of echocardiography like 15 to 16 years back, we used to uh, really struggle to do the transthoracic egos to get good images and to know uh, the different chambers and different structures and so also in the field of uh, transesophageal echocardiography. But now, I could see few probes which have come with AI. Uh, when you put the probe on the patient chest, it is so intelligent that it can tell you uh, which chamber is which, so that it can tell you on screen which is the left atrium, left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle, which is which are the which valves. So for the beginners, it's going to be a great relief to understand the anatomy of the heart, which is normal anatomy, which are the normal structures without any much of uh, you know hesitance and then the artificial intelligence is going to help the physicians for the diagnostics and the eco technicians to get a good image as well as uh, for the calculations because many times we lose a lot of time during our eco studies calculating different values like LVOT diameter the diameter of the aortic root or when we calculate the mitral inflow or the pressure gradients across different chain valves. So with the artificial intelligence, I can see all those calculations will be done in few seconds without even touching the machine. So this is going to be the future of the medicine and echocardiography, how the echocardiography is going to help the physicians, the new enthusiasts in echocardiography, physicians, and ultimately, the patient outcome is going to improve because I can see with the help of artificial intelligence, we can get the eco machines even into the primary uh, medical care where the person who is not very well trained even in the field of echocardiography can put the probe on the patient chest and find out which uh, chamber is or which valve is the problem or in case of uh, MI, he can find off the regional wall motion abnormalities. So the patient before he reach to the secondary or tertiary care center, we have a good diagnosis that patient is suffering from uh, mitral infarction. He's having regional wall motion abnormalities and he needs further treatment. So the artificial intelligence is going to be a real game changer. Definitely, Dr. Rahul. I believe that integrating AI into echocardiography will showcase the exciting synergy between technology and healthcare, which will promise a more accurate and efficient diagnosis, enhancing the diagnostic accuracy. Now, Dr. Rahul, you have also mentioned about cardiac anatomy. Now, considering the advancements, when it comes to echocardiography, how has echocardiography contributed to our understanding of the cardiac anatomy and its function? So uh, when we started with the M mode, as I told you, the M mode used to give the, it used to plot the motion of the different uh, leaflets or different valves or different chambers over the time integral. And it used to give some data. And then the 2D echocardiography came where we used to see the two-dimensional image of the three-dimensional structure that is our heart. So over a period of time, the technology got refined and the 3D came into clinical practice. So the 3D echocardiography gives real-time and three-dimensional picture of the heart. So can you imagine? You can see the three-dimensional structure of the heart in front of you. You can rotate that image. You can see different chambers. You can slice those image, crop those image, and you can go inside and you can find out different pathologies of the heart. So basically, with the 3D echocardiography, the understanding of the pathology have immensely improved. So we used to imagine when I am doing like transesophageal echocardiography, with our different views, we used to imagine so how the heart or the ultrasound is cutting at different uh, levels and how we are getting those images. 
but with 3d echocardiography we you have the full data set in front of you and you can slice those images do the cropping and you can go down into different chambers and see different valves different pathologies and you can see definitely different i mean function of different chambers how it is so the understanding of anatomy and then the pathology of the inside the heart of the heart has definitely improved with the help of 3d echocardiography and it is improving so basically uh, at one point we used to think the right ventricle is just a passive chamber to pump the blood from the right ventricle to the left ventricle but then we came to know how important the right ventricle is the same thing happened with the left atrium we came to know the volume of the left uh, atrium is very essential to predict the atrial fibrillation so the the understanding of the heart uh, anatomy improved over a period of time definitely with echocardiography and then our understanding how to manage these different pathologists definitely improved with the help of echocardiography now coming to our final question for the day could you please share insights into the future of echocardiography and how emerging technologies might further shape its evolution in the medical field? Yeah, certainly, Dr. Nigar. So, as I said, we started with M mode, then the 2D echocardiography came into the clinical practice, then 3D, then color mode, then pulse wave or Doppler mode, and then 3D echocardiography, and then ICE, that is intracardiac echocardiography. So, over a period of time, uh, initially, we have used the echocardiography for the diagnostic purpose. So basically, we have used it to know the, the different pathologies and the diagnosis of, uh, of our um, different pathologies. But uh, over a period of time, then we started, the cardiac anesthesiologist started using transesophageal echocardiography during the surgeries. So basically, we assess the heart before the surgery and after the surgery. So it helped the surgeons immensely uh, during the surgeries. Now moving ahead, what is happening is we have started using the echocardiography for the interventional procedures where the cardiologists have started taking care of very stenosed aortic valves or mitral valves in very frail patients or very old patients who are currently unfit for surgeries. So it's going to be a big uh, field which is opening up for the echocardiography. So the interventional echocardiography is the next step which is coming up into the picture or already it has come up in the picture and it is evolving. And as I said, we are not limiting ourselves for 2D echocardiography that is transthoracic echocardiography followed by transesophageal echocardiography. Then the 3D came uh, into place transthoracic and transesophageal. Now moving to the next step is intracardiac echocardiography so we have evolved and we have been extending our expertise from m mode to this sophisticated 3d echocardiography to the intracardiac echocardiography so we are trying to give our best and to help the different subset of patient to get a better outcome dr rahul thank you so much for an engaging and informative discussion with us today your insights into the evolution of echocardiography have been very enlightening and I'm sure it must be very interesting to our audience. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nigar, for giving this opportunity. And I think I have tried to talk as much as I can. Uh, I can express my passion about the echocardiography, definitely. And the main intention of uh, coming to this podcast was to... I just wanted to uh, get uh, more young, enthusiastic uh, physicians attached to this uh, fascinating technology and so that we can contribute for the patient's uh, outcome. Definitely, Dr. Rahul. I'm sure it will be of a very big benefit to, especially to young doctors out there. And uh, we're looking forward to many more insightful conversations together on our MedSignApps platform. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, doctor. And to our audience, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of MedSynapse Podcast. Stay tuned for more exciting topics at the intersection of medicine and technology. Goodbye and until next time.